Hi everyone, Wismeril here. Today I'm gonna give you my feedback on what I think is the best and fastest leveling build that you can find for the Sorcerer class. I've set up this build and you can find on my other videos there is a series of four videos that I published uh, before season started where I gave all the explanations on how and why you want to do your things in order to reach level 100 as fast as possible. So this is still the same build planner link which has all the information before World Tier 3 and World Tier 4 but I updated especially the World Tier 3 and World Tier 4 part with all the latest and greatest like if i had to do it all over again i would do the same plus a few small changes that were not counted uh, in the last videos so this one is the latest uh, build planner and video you should um, see if you intend to level up a sorcerer as fast as possible the beginning didn't change from level one to nine we are running a fireball uh, into firewall um, build where we are going to farm our uh, legendary aspects that we are going to use throughout the leveling. That's what is very strong about the ice shard build is that you can use everything there. It's predictable, farmable, and you'll be using that all the way to 100. Very, very strong stuff. Then level 16 to 40, the best way to level up is still um, and the dungeon in um, Scots Glen uh, tunnel, domain tunnel, well, it's actually written here. So from 16 to 40, you want to run uh, domain tunnels over and over again. Uh, when you're level 40, you want to farm, farm, get a weapon in the magic chest in the Altar of Ruin Stronghold. I recommend you watch some of my uh, videos before where you're going to see that. Then when you are level 40, uh, you're going to change to Ice Shard and clear the Capstone Dungeon. Now this thing, World Tier 3 Dome and Tunnels, is not the most optimized way to do things. Instead, to get your sacred weapons, you want to go back to World Tier 1 or 2 difficulty. You want to go to the Vampiric Helltides and farm keys, the Coffin's keys. You want to get tens of them or maybe just ten is enough and then you want to go to world tier three go to a vampiric hell tide on with your horse run around until you find a coffin use a key open it you'll find sacred items do this a few times and you'll get your sacred weapons you'll do the same in to get your first ancestral weapons in world tier four now world tier three dungeon is when you're going to uh, climb the um, Nightmare Dungeon Ladder, because you're starting at Tier 1 and you want to go as fast and as high as possible. You want to have a, at least 10 levels gap between you and the monster level inside those Nightmare Dungeons. And this build is very strong. It's going to allow you to do that. And now the interesting part. Uh, what am I changing based on uh, me leveling my character to 100, basically, and uh, giving you the latest feedback I have? We're still going to run all those um, like pre-farmed legendary aspects. Uh, Snow Guard for 20% damage reduction, Might for 20% damage reduction, uh, Piercing Cold for Ice Shards to Pierce, um, Disobedience for Armor, this one we'll talk about it later, Storm Swell, once you have a good sacred weapon, you'll run the Storm Swell uh, pre-farmed uh, aspect. The uh, Elementalist, for critical strike hits, efficiency and prodigy for mana management, and the aspect of control for additional damage. Notice that we don't put that on our amulet. We try to stay, uh, we don't want to rely too much on crowd control to do our damage. Much better to rely on critical strike damage because it's a lot easier to critical strike uh, bosses, the butcher and structures. Instead, you, you, it's a pain in the butt to control them basically, long story short. The first change I did in the first set of videos, I recommended to use a two-handed staff with the uh, Storm Swell imprinted on it for a 42 damage multiplier. This is not the best option. It's far better to run a one and offhand setup because uh, the one attack per second on the wind is crippling your clear speed. Much better to have a 1.2 setup, 1.2 attacks per second, 
it, it translates into faster hit and run animations. It's a lot faster to kite enemies. Therefore, you're going to go a lot faster when you clear your dungeons. Therefore, forget about the two-handed stuff. Go for a wand and a um, catalyst. A focus, I'm sorry. And not a dagger because you want the extra lucky hit chance. Uh, another change I did in the first iteration, I recommended to go for Frostbolt and Firebolt enchantments. And because uh, if you run Frostbolt enchantment here instead of Ice Shards, you're going to freeze enemies very fast, like in two, three, four hits maximum. You're going to freeze enemies and then you're going to benefit from the 25% multiplier of Ice Shards and the 25% multipliers of the aspects of control plus the half Frost uh, 18 times 9. Uh, multiplier, but it is not the best way to go. Much better to go with the Ice Shard enchantment. As you've seen in the previous video when I was showcasing how fast you can run and reset Sirocco Caverns Nightmare Dungeon, this is a lot better if you run the Ice Shard enchantment. So therefore that's the first change to the skills. Second change is, uh, this is not a change but I still don't recommend to run Frost Nova. You're far better running Ice Armor for the extra mana regeneration and sustain. That's a lot better. You're tackling dungeons uh, where the level between you and the monsters is like 10 to 15, sometimes more. You need uh, Ice Armor. And I never tell, told myself, oh, it would have been so nice if I had Frost Nova. The cooldown is 24 seconds. Maybe you can lower it to 20. That's still a long time where you cannot use that. So I don't recommend running that. I did change, uh, I used to run that, but seeing how fast it is to cap your resistances on the, your resistance on the sorcerer, you don't need that. So I took three points uh, uh, away here and also two points away there because with uh, mana rolls on your rings and helm plus mana rolls here in the Paragon board, you don't need those, well, I mean, it's, it's a nice to have, but I got those two points here. What I did with those points is to put three points in cold front to have a multiplier on the uh, frost, on the chill, I'm sorry. You apply from blizzard and from frostbolt to freeze enemies faster, which results in faster clears of Sirocco caverns. That's a lot better to run that. And the remaining points, I put it here. I used to have two points, and now I put three for resets. And this is very nice to reset those defensive skills. So a little bit more uptime on this is uh, welcome. For the rest, it's the same. We don't want to rely on Hoff Frost too much. We are relying on control now, but we are going to change it later. And the 25% multiplier uh, base of Ice Shard, we can't do much about it. But anyway, we are freezing enemies very fast. It's just that I don't want to rely on that, especially when it comes to boss fights, butcher fights, and structures that you might to have to destroy here and there. So that's about it. Um, let's talk about either Paragons or maybe no, let's keep on the uh, build legendaries. So when you enter War Tier 4, if you've seen the previous video that I'm going to link at the end of this video, which is showcasing how to reset Sirocco Cavern Dungeon over and over again until you reach 100. Uh, if you run this strategy, basically every 8 minutes you're running one run of Sirocco Cavern, then there's a downtime of 2 minutes and a half when you have to farm the Vampiric Hell Tide, the Vampiric Tides, I'm sorry, the Blood uh, Harvest. And uh, doing that, you will uh, loot a lot of legendaries. So from the previous setup here, where we're only using pre-farm legendary aspect, aspects except for this one, the exploiter, don't put anything on your boots, or maybe you can put a mobility if you want, but I didn't because it was a waste of resource. Resources are scarce when you're speed leveling, so I didn't do that. Wait for this one to drop. It's a multiplier on uh, bosses, butcher structures, and also elites, if uh, you don't burst them, when they are frozen, they will unfreeze and they will be uh, unstoppable for five seconds. So that's another 40% damage multiplier during that time. Now, you're going to loot a lot of legendaries by running this strategy. So we're going to change a few of those. We are not going to change any of those, not this one. Not going to change those two. We are going to change um, the Prodigy and replace it when you loot it by Avalanche. 
I'm um, sorry, frozen memories. This one is best in slot. It, it's big. It's, it will just save you mana, uh, increase damage, because Avalanche has a 40% damage multiplier when it triggers. It's best in slot. When you get it, get rid of Prodigy and put that one. And the second one is the Accelerating Legendary. When you get it, get rid of the Control Legendary. Like I said, we don't want to rely on crowd control. And attack speed is a lot better for this build, because you will very quickly reach a level where um, mana is not really an issue. And attack speed helps a lot in the cadence you're running, where it's like Frostbolt into Blizzard, into Frostbolt into Ice Shard, Frostbolt, Ice Shard, Frostbolt, Ice Shard, until Blizzard expires, and then Frostbolt, Blizzard, and again and again. Because we need to have a few um, basic attacks, uh, basic skill running for 20% damage reduction, and um, casting a basic skill reduce uh, Blizzard and Ice Shard uh, mana cost by 15%, Having a blizzard out gives us 20% damage reduction as well as a resource cost, resource cost reduction of 20%, which is very big that early in the game. So that's why we're running this setup and we're not really willing to change that. Adding attack speed is going to help a lot the way you're doing things. Plus, it's going to help in the kiting, in the hit and run process you're doing because you're moving in between those uh, frostbolt, blizzard and ice shards casts. So that's the new setup and only those two change. Those ones are best in slot. When you loot them, include them and you'll have a, a, a great time. Rubies in armor for max health. Um, the greens, emerald, uh, because everything is vulnerable. We don't want the blue ones for crowd control. Much better those ones. And here it's not really uh, skulls for armors that you will be running. You'll be running, you'll be increasing your uh, resistance instead. Make sure you cap out your poison resistance for Sirocco Cavern. Fire, I found it useful because a lot of time, I don't know why, maybe it's just RNG and I felt this way, a lot of uh, elites in Sirocco Caverns were having fire uh, affixes. So this one was handy. And then, uh, depending on the key you're opening, if there is like uh, this on death explosion of shadow type, uh, max this one. If you're running the dome, the lightning dome, max this one and so on, right? Um, make wise choices. All right, so that's it for the items. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you loot this item, frozen memory, there's one change you're going to do. You're going to remove the three points in mana shield because when uh, skills are free, huh, well, you're not going to have an amazing uptime on this. So you put the three points in mana shield there in precision magic or lucky hit chance. This is a lot more useful. So that's it for the uh, updates on the items. Let's talk uh, best roles be before we move on to Paragon and to Vampiric Powers. So very important, you want max mana on your rings and on your helm. This is super important. Then you want cold damage on your rings and on your uh, chest armor. This is because we are running this legendary node here, which scales with your cold damage. And at the end of the setup, we're going to scale that. Uh, when I reached level 100, this was 29. It was a multiplier of 29, which show you how good this setup is and how optimized it is, okay? Um, so, and then, so just look for two really affixes on each item. You're not gonna have the luxury to, you know, uh, maybe that one's better than this one. No, I don't think you're going to loot that many things. We are rushing level 100. But if you do, uh, look for next, you want to look for critical strike chance and lucky hit chance on your rings. On your helm, you definitely need max mana. And if you have a luxury to choose, lucky hit is handy, then armor and cooldown cool reduction. But I didn't have those because I was speed running. On um, um, chest plates, called damage, and then defensive stuff. You can have any combination. On top of those three, which are best in slots, you can have percent armor or max health. So same goes here. And actually we're putting uh, total armor as the fourth best in slot. For gloves, you want, if you can loot a legendary, which says I shot PS four times, that's big. It's a big upgrade. Uh, get it, like same than those two. You want to imprint four, it's a lot better. Uh, you don't care so much about the damage reduction part. Just get four. On this, you want attack speed first. It helps a lot in the kiting. You will clear your dungeons a lot faster. Then ranks, ranks to ice shard. And then if you have the luxury, crit chance, lucky hit chance. 
On boots, you want movement speed. Actually, funnily enough, on my boots and amulet, I had nothing but movement speed. I kept uh, uh, boots that had maxed out movement speed on both the amulet and the boots. I upgraded them to uh, all the way to three, and then when I could afford it, to four. And that's about it, because you really love movement speed on speed leveling builds, right? So get those ones. And I didn't even try to look for a mana cost reduction uh, second. It was okay. I didn't have it. But if you have, if you do get mana cost second, and then you can get resistance or all those ranks or whatever on the boots, it doesn't matter very much for leveling. Here it's the same. You want movement speed. And then if you can, mana cost. And then ranks to devouring blaze and lucky hit chance. That's what you're aiming for there. For uh, main hand and off hand, you want high DPS, and that's about it. You won't have the luxury to, you know, have two um, like off hands of same uh, DPS and having to choose those nice stats that you could have. No, you won't. You'll just equip the highest DPS um, focus and the highest DPS wand. You don't want daggers. You want lucky hit as an, a prefix on your weapon. So that's going to do it for the build with the legendaries, roles, uh, and skill tree. Now, let's move on to the Paragon board. So the Paragon board, if you're running the strategy that I explained in the previous video where we are resetting to Oblivion uh, Sirocco Cavern, you won't level up your Glyph. And this is totally fine because this setup here is very, very optimized for this strategy. We don't care about level one, well, like we want, well, we don't care, like we have a level 10, 20 glyph, we only care about the level one. Why? Because level one, we're going to fetch the multiplier on all those glyphs. Exploit at level of one, we get a 10% damage multiplier. Elementalist at level one, we get 15, realistically, it's a 10, but if you teleport to the face of your enemies, like bosses, you're, it's nice to do that, it's going to be a 15% damage multiplier. <clears throat> Unleash level 1, that's a 6.7% damage multiplier, and the extra mana regeneration is very handy. Destruction, level 1, that's a 12% damage multiplier. Um, tactician, level 1, 10% damage multiplier. The only exception to that is Flame Feeder. That's the only glyph, that's the first glyph you want to level up to 15. And that's the only one that really matters in this setup. Because if it's less than 15, it won't see those two nodes. You can grab that one, but it's not going to be enough to benefit from the 10% damage multiplier. So first glyph you level up is Flame Feeder. By running this setup and doing, doing it, I was able to, because you have to farm some keys here and there when you enter World Tier 3, and before you get your two GG keys, or sometimes three, uh, Sirocco Caverns. So you will have some uh, glyph XP points that you're going to have to put and put it there. You just need this one, level 15, so it sees those two, and you benefit from the 10% damage multiplier. Look at this setup. Seven boards, seven glyphs, seven damage multipliers. Oh, sorry, six. We're not running one in here. This is huge for this strategy, huge uh, scaling of your damage. Backs up, back ups the plan very nicely. On top of that, we're getting two damage multipliers, this one 15% or 30% against frozen enemy. And this one that we are going to scale all the way, like I said, when I reached level 100 with those non-physical damage, cold damage nodes, I scaled that all the way to 29. It caps out at 30. Perfect job, Wismarine. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, you have all the information. What you don't know yet is how... Uh, you're going to spend your points. So let me give you a heads up in that. Let me give you the exact order in which we're going to sequence our Paragon board leveling. All right, let's spend our first Paragon point. When you reach level 50, and if you have completed your Renown, you will get uh, 23, 24, or 25 Paragon points um, for free. So this is how you're going to spend your first uh, 20-ish uh, points, right? So this will bring you all the way to here. This is how you spend the first one. The only 
glyph you will have available at that time is this one, okay? Then we are going to, um, okay, what's the best? Okay, anyway, I'm going to change that because now I truly believe the best way is to go this way. So you're going to spend your first points over here and you're going to rush this node here. It used to be in the data mining, your frost skill against vulnerable enemies have a multiplier on critical strike damage. That's how it was data mined. It has been changed. There's no more critical strike uh, damage involved. So that's why we're rushing it now. Because before, when that was the case, we had to grab those max mana nodes and have the elementalist uh, legendary on our amulet before we would go here. So we could uh, make use of our crit hits. That's not the case anymore. So you want to rush this. Once you rush this, then whoops, you want to go over here and over there, right? You're doing your nightmare dungeons in World Tier 3 and bang, you loot the exploit glyph. If you loot the exploit glyph, you're going to put it here. It's going to be a level one. And you're going to go backwards five points. One, oops, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. You're going to use those five points like that. That's, uh, wait, which one's not needed? Yeah, that's the setup. Yep, you're going to spend your uh, five points there and bang, you have a 10% damage multiplier. See it as another legendary uh, power you just put on your equipment for another damage multiplier. That's how it feels. We're going to scale our damage this way. Then you're still leveling and bang, you loot Elementalist Legendary. So you equip it here, it's a level one. You're going to go backwards and you're going to get, I believe that's the setup, yep. You're going to grab those 40 intelligence points on a level one glyph, bang, another multiplier, 10 to 15. Then we're going all the way here and we're grabbing the max mana nodes that we're going to max out very soon when we reach 340 willpower. The build is, uh, don't worry, like I uh, optimized everything that could be optimized. Um, the, the board number four will be um, fully uh, on with the bonus of rare up to board level four. Five and six and seven, nope, but it doesn't matter so much because they are not based in slot. Then we're going enchantment master. We are going this way. And at this stage, you realistically will have uh, gotten the Unleash um, Glyph. It's gonna be level one. And you're going to max the intelligence part by, whoops, by going this way. Oops. Yep. So that's 40 intelligence and that's another damage multiplier plus some very handy mana regeneration. Okay, then we're going to uh, Burning Instinct, there. And we're gonna go over here. Let me look, I think that's the way. So it's, um, I think it's this way. And it's a dexterity node. Here we're going to put destruction that you would realistically have looted by now. And it's gonna go like this, bang. That's another multiplier just gotten yourself. Then we're going here. And finally, we're going to Frigid Fate where we're going to grab this legendary node here. By the time I reach this uh, point, it was scaling to 13%. Having cold damage rolls on my rings and chest armor, uh, I had a 13% damage multiplier when I reached that point, okay? So now there are two ways you can continue. If you already have a level 15 flame feeder glyph, rush it, that's a multiplier. If you don't, which I believe will be the case, it was my case, I didn't have it up to level 15, you're going to grab those nice utility nodes Lucky hit chance, that's more avalanche procs, it's gonna help a lot with what we're doing. And we're gonna grab those. Chill application, uh, enemies will freeze faster by standing on your blizzards and being hit by frost bolts. And that helps a lot in speed farming, in speed leveling rather. So you want to grab those. 
And then by that time, I had my glyph to level 15, which is over here. Um, we were, I was grabbing those. And that's the flame feeder that I had upgraded, upgraded to level 15. And by doing this, if it's not level 15, it won't see those two nodes. Bang, another damage multiplier. Then we're coming up here to Searing Heat. Um, and we're going to <clears throat> get those nodes over here. It's a Dexterity Tactician there, level 1. And by doing this, that's another 10% multiplier. That's the bug, that's what you're looking to achieve uh, first. You're going to scale your damage to the moon, like really. You don't need those uh, like additive scaling on those glyphs. No, you don't. You want the multipliers. And by doing this, you can keep, keep up with a gap of plus 15 to plus 20 levels between you and the mobs. If you're level 75, they can be level 95. That's very fine. You have the damage. You have the toughness. You have your, this is the perfect build. Well, I mean, I made it, so I'm not going to be very objective. You know, I might not sound like it. I'm probably not. <laughs> that's how life works. But that's the most effective way to do your things. I'm totally convinced. Mm, I, I, don't, I don't see what can beat it. If you do know, please let me know. Enlighten me. Uh, you know, I'd be glad to entertain you and discuss. Uh, anyway, let's get back to it. Now that you have done all those, uh, you have assigned all those, the next thing you want to do is to grab those um, rare nodes that you left out on the way. This one for damage, this one for um, resistance, 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 uh, and this one. You want to grab those. Then you want to alter your path a little bit. You want to do that and do this because you're going to grab some additional damaging nodes. And then from here, you want to grab those one, two, three. And then now you want to grab those magic nodes, one here, one here, one there. So that's the setup. Now what changed between this and the last version is I didn't add this block with the chill application and I find it amazing. So you really want to get it over this one, it's 10 points each, and this is basically just as many as much damage 5, 10, 15, uh, 45, and here we're getting uh, uh, 35, I mean, and this is 35 also. Same damage, except you have chill application instead of uh, resistance. This is far more, far better. Right, now, how about the 14 remaining points? Uh, you should be level, Cat for Cat says. Um, that should be, you should be level 96, something like that. And now is the time you want to go over here and over there. There's one point I didn't assign. Strange. Uh, yeah, well, the um, I don't know where, but it's in the link it's going to be fine because I'm redoing things uh, and... It's strange. Well, use the link. It's updated with the complete information. Now, that's the setup. It should be zero here. If you happen to have had the luxury to level up two more glyphs, I recommend leveling up Unleash and Destruction. Because if you level up Unleash to 15, it sees those two rare nodes. Therefore, you have 20 extra intelligent points. You can remove one, two, three. Four, and you can spend those points one, two, oops, one, two, three, and four. And if you level up um, destruction all the way to 15, it's gonna see an additional dexterity node so you can save on those two points while keeping the multiplier, and those two points will go here. Maybe the last point is this one, I believe. And that's the setup if you somehow manage to level up those two glyphs. If you did, you have those three on level 15. The next one can only be the exploit one. You don't want to level up this one, doesn't, doesn't do anything. And you don't want to do this one 
won't do much. Okay, that's the setup. So there you have it. How to set up your um, speed leveling Paragon board in the most efficient way you can. Right, let's uh, have a look at the Vampiric Powers. For the Vampiric Powers, two things. They are the Vampiric Powers you can uh, unlock by using those two minutes and a half downtime to run the uh, Blood uh, Harvest. And they are the ones that get unlocked by the bounties, the bounty board, and by the uh, campaign, the mini campaign that's available in Season 2. The best in slots, if you don't have anything, if you just have the ones that you level up through the uh, UI in your inventory. The best one will be, where are you, the one that's related to vulnerable damage. This one, Prey on the Weak. A 16% damage multiplier to vulnerable. We apply vulnerable, so it's a no-brainer. The next best one was, surprisingly, a defensive one. Uh, having recovery on life is huge for the sorcerer. We do, as a class, we do recovery with barriers. That's how the sorcerer have, um, yeah, recovery on his on what he's doing. And we don't have, we have none on life. So if you add this one, it's gonna help a lot your survivability. Because once you pack enough toughness, that is armor, uh, damage reduction, and resistance. Then uh, scaling your recovery is like um, scaling your toughness. You can double, triple your toughness if you add recovery to the mix. So that's when this comes super handy. So I would consider it number two on my list. Number, number three would be this one. Though I don't like it very much because once again, I don't like to rely during leveling, that is, on crowd control frozen to deal my damage. Uh, this one's a 25% damage multiplier. On top of the 25 from Ice Shard, you know, that's nice. And we're freezing enemies anyways, just that I don't want to make it my main source of damage. I've been traumatized too many times having a long boss fight because I had so many things that relied on crowd control and it was a pain in the butt to stagger the boss uh, when you're uh, on a naked character with bare bones, uh, you know, build. Anyway, so that's number three. Number four, which could be number three now that I think about it, this one's a hell lot of fun. Infection. Okay, the, you know, poison damage. Every eight times you inflict damage, you trigger a 70% poison damage. Now, why is it best in slot? Ice shards launches five single shards, which is five times the damage. This is direct damage, so dot it doesn't come in the picture. But two, so Blizzard won't affect that. Two casts of ice shards apply this thing. And poison is not cold, but we're scaling non-physical damage. And guess what? Poison is non-physical damage. So we are applying most of our multipliers, not all, most of them, I don't know, 80%, something like that, to uh, non-physical damage or ba damage while you have a barrier, while uh, it's, they are vulnerable, uh, you have a barrier, it's Monday, those things, they will apply to this. Only a few of them will not apply, but are still enough to benefit a lot from this damage. So that's either number three or number four, depending on how you want to see it. Number five would be the least worst is this one, damage reduction when you're low on life, which goes very well with the rest because we, we get a large hit that breaks our barrier. We add a barrier and we are low life. This barrier is gonna have uh, more damage reduction while we heal up with this or proper potion basically. So that's the fifth one of the Vampiric Powers. Now, if you did um, run the campaign to chapter three, I believe that's when you get, where are you, the attack speed one, which is huge. This thing hits like a truck. It's, that's the barber of the season. Well, maybe not, but that's, that's very strong. That's what uh, Sky Rockets, the um, ball lightning build that I'm going to cover next on the channel, by the way. So this, if you reach le uh, chapter three of the mini campaign, you get this one, get it, like remove this one, resilience, and get that instead. On the bounty board, you get, I think, the only one that matters really is this one. You can consider if you get the bounty board one, but not the attack speed one, get this one instead of the damage reduction one. 
So that's it guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you're still leveling, by all means, use that information to your advantage. This video and the next video that's about um, resetting uh, Sirocco Cavern Dungeon. That's, that's the best way, in my opinion, you're going to reach level 100 and it's, it's fun. Like, uh, I like Sirocco Cavern, it's a very nice dungeon. Mobs will be 20 levels above you, above your level. It's a lot of fun to outplay them. You're, it's not hard, but it's fun. It's a, it's a fun difficulty, right? That's what I mean. So you're doing Sirocco Caverns, you're doing uh, Blood Tide, Blood Harvest, which is the new uh, season mechanic, which is fun. You're, you're doing fun things while doing efficient things. You are not, like I see some doing, you are not going to do a domain tunnel from level 1 to level 100 all over the place. I've seen some French team doing that. Uh, that's not fun to me, I'll be honest. But this one is fun. Fun can mean different things for different people. That's my definition of it. If you abide by this, run it. If you don't, do something else. That's just my uh, 50 cents. Anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure to have you there. Uh, now that the leveling is uh, covered, we are going to rock some pretty sweet, pretty juicy uh, build guides. Number one, I have coming the um, ball lightning because it's super OP, let's face it. Number two, I have a chain lightning that is super fast at farming uh, comps, uh, material mats for uh, uh, invoking those bosses that melt those bosses and that allows you to um, like speed farm those uniques and get to the uh, ultimate stage of the ball lightning because ball lightning seems to be the best build in season two so maybe not but like top s tier i would say um so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna have those two builds uh, running and i'm going to share them on the channel next i'm gonna do a, a conjuration build because there's something out there that is very strong and very fun and very synergistic so we're gonna have that on the channel too then after that i'm going to have the uh, dot uh, build because it's something new from the season also um, and last but not least, it's gonna be, uh, this one's going to be fun, but I promise I will make it strong. We're going to have a basic attack, a basic spell build. That's going to be strong. And it, it does have synergies all over the place. So uh, uh, this one's going to be a lot of fun. I did not assemble this one yet. I assembled all the other ones. But this one, I didn't assemble it yet. It, it's going to be fun. Like, like, like come on. <laughs> Anyway, guys, this was Wismaril. I'm happy to have you here. Uh, if you like the content of this channel, subscribe, like, comment, and you know, you know the story, you know the song. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun.